I wanted to move on now to this issue of the 2030 climate change target. Do you expressly oppose this target of the governments to reduce uh, emissions by 43% from 1990 levels by 2030? Or is it that it's just your view the government won't reach the target, so there's no point committing to it? Well, I've made the point, Andrew, that uh, there's, no, there's no prospect, it seems, of the government reaching the target. They introduced a bill, uh, which is now a law, uh, to increase the price of cars by about $10,000 to help them achieve the 43% target. They're still not going to get there anyway. The 43% target has contributed significantly to an increase in power prices. And I think that the question is, what's in our country's best interest? I, I know the Prime Minister loves to hang out with all the world leaders and get a slap on the back and the rest of it. But his job is actually to make it easy and not harder for Australian families and small businesses. So we're, we're fully committed to net zero by 2050. I think interim targets are fine where they're realistic and we support renewable uh, going into the system. We know that there's 90 per cent firming or 24 seven power coming out of the system by 2034. The Prime Minister talks about green hydrogen replacing that. It's not commercially viable yet. And there are a lot of question marks over whether it can be, particularly given how much water is consumed to make each kilo. So we have to make sure that we've got a realistic system and energy is the economy. Uh, it's not just your household power bill that's going through the roof. It's the local butcher and the local IGA, the local coal store, the local farmer, anybody that's got cold storage. And that's why under Labor you're paying so much more for your groceries when you go to the supermarket. So we have to get a system that's working right for us. And the Prime Minister is about to sign up to a 2035 target, uh, only, you know, essentially a decade away. And that's going to be between 65 and 75 per cent. We don't even see any economic modelling yet. So what will that mean for extra increases in power prices? And a renewables only approach that the government's adopted uh, is going to continue to drive up power prices. Their plan is 1.2 to 1.5 trillion dollars, all of which is going to be paid for by consumers and small business people. Were you to hit government, would you seek to change the legislation around the 2030 target? Well, I, I would act in our country's best interests, Andrew. We've got international obligations. We don't uh, propose to leave uh, the Paris Agreement at all. And, and we're fully signed up to net zero by 2050. But if, if you think it's a, a linear progression, w they will cripple the economy. At the moment, Labor is slowly grinding the economy to a halt. There was 0.1% of growth in the last quarter. We know that we're up to five quarters now consecutively of negative growth uh, on a per capita basis. And families know it. Uh, you speak to retailers around the country, to cafe owners and restaurateurs, they see it. They are down, you know, in double digits uh, in terms of their turnover. People are coming into restaurants and not ordering as much or they're just eating at home. Uh, there is a chance that we go into recession, which is why I think there is uh, talk of an early election. The Prime Minister will want to go before that. Uh, we know that we've had 12 interest rate increases and we've had a threefold increase in the number of manufacturing businesses which have closed over the last two years under this government. So over three budgets, they've made decisions which have made it much tougher for families. Uh, small businesses are closing at record numbers. And I think this is a government that, through its energy policy, the renewables only policy, uh, not taking into account gas and right. nuclear and uh, making sure that we can have a good balance, that they really are wrecking the economy at the moment. But Mr Dutton, just again, if you came into government, would you seek to change the legislation around the 2030 target, to change that target? Well, Andrew, I think it would be responsible uh, to take advice from Treasury and Finance and the central agencies about the economic conditions that we inherited from Labor. We know that debt will be over a trillion dollars uh, that uh, will be bequeathed to the next government from Labor. We know that uh, there's a prospect of negative growth and we're likely going into the sixth consecutive quarter of per capita, uh, you know, people going backwards uh, in their own budgets. That's what that means. Uh, so I think we, we have a look at all of that information. And if there are settings that we need to change, uh, then we would change them if it means helping families with the cost of living crisis that Labor has, uh, has created. But it doesn't mean exiting Paris and it doesn't mean uh, walking away from our, our very clear commitment uh, to net zero by 2050. We're decarbonising, our economy is transitioning, and I believe that with a zero emissions nuclear technology underpinning gas, uh, gas is going to be required like we've never seen before uh, as we see 
the 90 per cent of those firming powers going out of the system by 2034. And we're going to see uh, the need for a replacement. And green hydrogen, um, the Prime Minister can't tell you when that's going to come into the system. And otherwise, the lights go out, which is what the... Uh, the regulator's warning at the moment where, under this government there's likely to be blackouts and brownouts. Will you come up with the 2035 target by the time of the election? You've just mentioned the government are going to come up with one. Will you come up with an alternative as an opposition? If, if the government releases the economic modelling, which shows how negatively this will impact on the economy, then we will be able to consider that and, and have an informed judgment. I, I think, well, why not sign up to 90% or 95 or 55 or 45 or 78? Uh, what, what do these numbers mean uh, without understanding the impact on people's, on people's household budgets? People are struggling at the moment. They're, they're losing their jobs. Uh, people are not able to afford their mortgages. Uh, the electricity prices under this government have gone up by 30%. Gas is up. Groceries are up. Your insurance premiums are up. The whole economy depends on energy. Whenever you've got an increase in the cost for farming uh, through extra cost for cold storage, the farmers pass that on through higher prices uh, that you ultimately pay at the checkout. And if the Prime Minister doesn't get this and he doesn't understand that people are hurting at the moment, uh, I, I just don't know... What, I mean, what do people have to do? Marching in the streets to tell him the reality of their lives at the moment. So let's look at the economic modelling and understand the impact, good, bad or otherwise, uh, on our nation and make an informed judgment. Otherwise, I think it would be reckless, frankly, to sign up to a target sight unseen and not understanding whether it's going to mean another 30% uh, in increase in, in people's power prices. There are pensioners this winter who are eating or heating, but not both. And I'm not going to contribute to further agony for Australians that the Prime Minister is imposing on them at the moment. And that'll be a big difference between the two parties as we go into the next election.